Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Creative Kindergarten Podcast. My name is Amanda, and I'm an early childhood educator in Ontario, Canada. And today, I'm going to be talking to you about play-based versus paper centers. Before I get started on the actual content of this podcast, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on with me. Um, If you're watching this on my YouTube channel and can see my face, you can see that my hair is all a hot mess. Um, I usually pre-record all of these episodes in batches um, a while before they go up, but it's been such a crazy busy start to the school year that I haven't been able to pre-record a lot of podcasts lately. So we just came back from a kind of camping weekend and um, I unpacked my stuff and now I'm just going to start recording because I don't want to fall behind with these podcasts, but I wanted to make sure... I also give you guys some quality content. So if you're seeing me and you see the crazy hair, that's why I just came back from camping. It was an awesome time. Um, We spent time with family at um, a campsite and it's a week before Thanksgiving. So it was nice just to have some time away, take a break from school stuff and teachers be teacher stuff and just have some time as a family relaxing. And uh, yeah. I'll get started on the actual podcast now. So I know that, especially in Ontario, Canada, where we have the full day kindergarten model that they just call kindergarten now because everybody is full day kindergarten. But for this purposes, I do like to call it full day kindergarten to differentiate it from other kindergarten programs that are from around the world. But the Ontario kindergarten program is very play based and There's been some misconceptions, I think, about what that should look like and what that is about and how that looks in a kindergarten classroom. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I see play-based kindergarten being run in kindergarten classrooms. This does not mean that this is the only way anybody should ever run their classroom or this is the only way it works. This is just the way it has worked for me in the past and how I see full day kindergarten working in the classroom. And if you're not in Ontario, Canada, and you're from somewhere else around the world or in the United States or across Canada, maybe you can see some similarities with your program. Maybe you get some ideas for your programs that are maybe not so play-based with their curriculum. In Ontario, we have a kindergarten program that's a basis for what we teach in our programs, but it's very open-ended and teachers are taken as professionals so we can interpret what how we want to run our classrooms based on the program but we don't have to follow any kind of curriculum or any kind of script or any kind of module on how to go through the school year so as I'm just going to talk about how I see the program being run I want you to know that I know this isn't the only way to run a kindergarten classroom and this isn't necessarily the best philosophy or even the best way to run a classroom. It's just how it has worked for me and my teaching partners in the past. And I'm really um, excited to hear how you run your play-based kindergarten programs and to see what your opinions are on this. So the first thing I want to talk about a little bit is what is play-based centers? So I think there's a very, uh, very distinct way that you can run a kindergarten classroom that is play-based that toes the line between teaching students the skills that they need but also leaving it open-ended and allowing for play. So play-based a play-based curriculum allows children to learn the skills they need in a structured environment with the help and supervision of an experienced teacher who knows how to take interest to, interests and experiences and turn them into learning moments. So this is like a very open-ended model of kindergarten where you're not necessarily um, telling um, or scripting how your whole year is going to plan out. You are really focusing on the needs of the children and are like hyper aware of where their needs are and meeting them where they're at and building on the skills that they have instead of just forcing a curriculum upon them. So for me, a play-based program doesn't necessarily just mean that they just get to play all day. This isn't I set up toys and children can just play all day and then I go to different centers and we talk about what they're playing with. 
it is more of a very thought out environment upon which we have activities and centers that are set up to spark interest or to follow along with the interest that they already have in their in our program and make learning happen there. So I know that a lot of people, especially in kindergarten, follow themes. So September will be an apple theme and then in October we'll do a pumpkin theme and then November it'll be, I don't know, a snow theme. And there's a very structured way sometimes in kindergarten to follow themes and then fit all these um, topics and learning into those themes so that you're teaching to the students constantly through a lens of a curriculum. And I know that happens a lot in other places where they have to follow a curriculum to a T, even if students aren't ready to, let's say, start writing sentences. If the curriculum says you're writing sentences, that which that's what you're doing. Whereas I find in Ontario, it's very much following the needs of the students. So if they're ready to write sentences, that's when you're going to step it up and start writing sentences with them. But if they're still just learning the first letter of their name, you're meeting them there and starting from there. So it's a very responsive way to run a kindergarten program that I really, I love because students are coming to us with all different backgrounds. Some kids come knowing all the letters and sounds and knowing how to count to a hundred and knowing some sight words are starting to read. But there are some other students that come in and they still don't know how to write their name. So having this play-based program really allows for teachers and ECEs to have that room to build upon the skills that are already there. So for me, a play-based program isn't necessarily just play all day philosophy. It, it, it encompasses a lot more than that and is more about how we allow children the time to play in order to meet them where they're at. It's like the vehicle upon which us as teachers, we can help them um, acquire all the skills that they need in the classroom. So I think that there's a disconnect there because I, and this isn't a judgment. I'm just going to preface this. This is never a judgment on somebody else's teaching style. This is just how I see it. Um, I see some classrooms where they see play-based and they think, oh, that just means that we're going to play. And then if children show an interest in learning about letters and numbers, then we'll, well, then we'll show them some letters and numbers. And for me, it's more that we're going to set up some, a great play environment so that we're able to meet the students where they're at so that we can teach them those letters and numbers. Because I don't, not that I don't think children will ever not be interested in learning about letters and numbers, but it's maybe not something that they even know that they want to learn about until you start showing it to them. So for me, that's the very big difference between play-based centers. And then of course, paper centers is the ex other extreme of that. So I kind of picked um, play-based as one extreme and then centers as the uh, paper centers as the other extreme of this where it's just all students are learning the same thing at the same time so that scripted curriculum where they have a workbook and students sit at a table and you say turn to page 35 and they have to turn to that page and start writing let's say um, a sentence or making words with the letter v or whatever it is that is scripted for that day in that program where i think that's a whole other extreme so having a completely scripted paper curriculum at one end and then having a completely open-ended play-based curriculum being at the other end, I think that for me, it is a good mix between the two that makes for a really great kindergarten classroom that allows all the children to explore the skills that they need. So for me, the what has worked in the past the best has been a great mix of the two. So I know that there are some teachers that are like no paper and pencil in the classroom. And for me, that is the extreme of the play base. The no pl no writing um, on a piece of paper happens in their classroom. And then there are some programs that are completely like there is no play involved in it. And then that being the other end, I fall I think right in the middle of that, where I think that a good mix of having some explicit instruction along with some play mixed into it makes for a really great environment that is perfect for learning, especially at the younger ages that um, are coming into our group, because we have some students that come in that are still three years old. So if, if you're not from um, Ontario, Canada, you have 
like the way it works for birthdays is different um, across. I've seen it from everywhere in in a lot of like different Facebook groups for kindergarten teachers. And so in Ontario, Canada, you have to turn four by December 31st. So if you're still three, like let's say your birthday is December 31st, which happened to us last year, we had a little boy whose birthday was December 31st. So he wasn't turning four till the end of the year. So he came to us and for most of the year, he was only three years old. So getting him to sit in a chair and just sit and write on a piece of paper all day would not have been developmentally appropriate for him. But then we have some January babies who turn four in January and because it's a two-year program, by the time January comes around, they're already six years old. So we might have somebody who just turned four on December 31st and then in the same classroom, somebody who turned six on January 1st and we come back in January from Christmas break and we have a four-year-old and a six-year-old in the same class who are very developmentally spread apart. So I love that this play-based mixed program can address the needs of both of those students wherever they are. So I've addressed a little bit about how or why, not even how, uh, why we choose to do um, play-based centers a lot because it does help us meet the needs of our younger students, especially who are just coming into the program and might have no previous previous exposure to any kind of structured environment like a kindergarten classroom. So that's where play-based centers really come into play. And when I'm talking about play-based centers, I'm talking about like intentionally set up spaces for children to learn and explore at. So these might be like a sensory bin, or we always have a fine motor station or small world play, something with loose parts, something that has an intentional purpose behind it, not just toys that are thrown out on the table and we just let them play with whatever is there. It's really intentionally set up centers that might have literacy skills or math skills built into them that the students might not even realize right away, but that is something that we build upon. So I'm trying to just think of an example of a really great play-based center that our students have loved. And I'm thinking about a center that we set up with bowling pins. And on the bowling pins, we had had um, little cards that had numbers on them. So whenever they knocked over the bowling pins when they were playing in our classroom, they had to read which numbers they had knocked over. So something that's really fun and exciting for the kids to do, especially when they were interested in bowling, but also bringing in elements of math into that. So when I'm talking about play-based centers, I'm not just talking about having um, like toys just set up around the classroom and just letting them play. I'm talking about really intentionally planning out our, our centers. And then I also want to talk about our paper centers and how we use those in our classroom for intentional learning that's happening there. So again, we're not just photocopying worksheets and putting them out at centers just to have worksheets at centers. Whenever we do have done that in the past, there there is a reason behind them. And we also make sure that our students know that reason. I think that's also another great thing that has to be brought more into the play-based program is making sure students know what they're learning and why. So with paper centered, uh, we, ev- we have them set up around the classroom and they're really great for our students that are ready. Again, we have students that turn six in January. They're ready to write. They want to write. They're excited about writing. They're excited about using a pencil and a piece of paper. So for them, these centers are perfect developmentally because that's where they are. So for them, uh, the worksheet writing center is where they gravitate towards. And I found that especially last year with our class, we had a group of year two students who loved writing centers. They just, they thrived in that kind of environment and they loved taking those writing centers and then finding another way to do them. So not even doing them the way that you would think that you would put out a paper center and they would do, they would find a different way to do the center, which was really cool. And so having those out for those students that are, let's say in year two, 
but also the year one students that are showing some interest in using a paper and pencil, they might gravitate towards those two and they have friends that are in year two and they might go to those paper centers. So having them available and having them out at a table is a great way to start building that foundation and that exposure to using a pencil and a piece of paper to complete their work because eventually they will have to do it. They're going into grade one they're going to have to be able to use a pencil. They're going to have to be able to sit down and write on a piece of paper. It's just a fact of life. So if we start them in kindergarten, they'll have an easier transition into grade one. And the other thing I like to make sure that we're exposing all of our students to paper and pencil centers is building their stamina and their ability to pay attention to one task for a longer period of time. I'm finding that every year that attention span is getting a little bit shorter and shorter when they first come to us. So getting them to sit down and maybe they're not completing that worksheet to um, like the highest standards, but at least they're sitting there and they're paying attention to something for more than five minutes and they're working through something and they're holding the pencil and they're working those fine motor skills. So maybe that paper task, the intention of it isn't the same as my year two student that I want to be writing sentences on it. Maybe for that little year one student, it's just that he's sitting there, he's holding a pencil and he's making marks on a piece of paper. I don't really care if there's a sentence or not on there. That's not the purpose of that paper center for that student at that time. I hope that makes sense. Like just because it has a worksheet with an intent behind it doesn't mean that every student has to complete it 100% and then it has to be perfectly done. Some students, the intent of that paper center is to really build their knowledge base, let's say on the sight word that's on that center. But for other students, it might just be that, yeah, they sat there for five minutes, they were able to write their name and they put some scribbles on the piece of paper. So building their stamina, their attention span. The other reasons that I like to have paper centers available for our students is that we want them to be exposed to those writing utensils. We want them, it's great to be able to build up those fine motor skills with Play-Doh and um, tweezers and all those uh, like the threading of the beads it's great to be building up their fine motor and if you're noticing a lot of fine motor issues and writing issues in your class I would definitely recommend listening to my fine motor podcast that I did a few weeks ago but that's not enough to get them to write building their fine motor skills is great it'll make them great writers but if you never give them a pencil they won't be able to write they still need a pencil to be able to write so having those paper and pencil centers is another great way to just get them exposed to using a pencil and building those fine motor skills and getting them ready for when they want to start writing they have the skills that are required to do so and then the other part of having those paper centers out is that explicit teaching still matters very much when it comes to teaching students how to write. So we can use Play-Doh, we can use loose parts, we can do everything to make letters and numbers, but if you never give them a pencil and sit them down and show them how to make the letter A, explicitly with a paper and pencil, they won't know how to do it. It's a whole other skill to get those curved and straight lines that are needed to make all the different letters and numbers. And I think the curriculum, it's, I think it's writing without tears, does a really great job at breaking down all those curved lines and straight lines and circle lines that students need to write all the different letters and numbers. And really getting students to sit down with a pencil and try out all those different mark making um, skills that they need to be able to build up to making nice letters and numbers. I think that they need that paper and pencil practice to be able to do that or else they won't just by using Play-Doh and other play-based um, centers, it's not the same. And though there is a great place for those because it does build their exposure to letter recognition and number recognition and word recognition, there is definitely a space for the play-based aspect, but there also has to be a space for the writing aspect with a pencil. And so you need to build that proper base for students that when they are ready to start writing sentences, they are able to make those marks on the paper because they have that previous exposure to the pencil. So I hope that helps you work through 
paper pe- paper centers versus play-based centers. I hope that my ideas weren't too scattered around because I do have a lot of beliefs around this kind of thing where I think going to one extreme or the other along this spectrum is not helpful for the students in any way. We want them to be successful in their school career. And kindergarten, I always say, is like your starting point. These students are going to have a very long career, hopefully, in education. They will be going to school for a very long time after they leave your classroom. So we don't want them coming to school and having a negative association for for with it for the first time when they enter the classroom. We don't want it to be all about you need to sit there and you need to use a pencil and you need to work through this workbook one page at a time because that's just not developmentally appropriate. Like that's not what a three or four year old is, should be capable to do. Like that is a higher expectation than what developmentally they are able to do at that time. But also, it's also a disservice if you're only going the play-based of center route where you're not giving them exposure to the paper pencil side of things that they are going to need later on in life because let's face it they're going into grade one they're going to need to know how to use a pencil in order to be successful when they reach the higher grades so i think a really good mix of both is a great way to expose your students to Uh, a variety of ways that they can express themselves, a variety of ways that they can accomplish tasks. And it's just a really developmentally um, cognizant approach to teaching kindergarten. And I hope that this helps you work through it. I know that this is not um, a way to make you in any way think that I don't like the way you teach kindergarten if you have a completely play-based center or you have a worksheet uh, kindergarten. It's it's just a personal philosophy of mine. And with these podcasts, I always want to make sure that everybody's just reflective on their own practice. So you're thinking about your classroom and how you do things. And you're thinking if, is this the best way that I could be approaching kindergarten? Maybe getting some new ideas for your Um, your classroom. So I hope that this isn't like nobody feels like a personal attack on how they teach their kindergarten classroom. This is just my own way that I have thought that kindergarten has worked best for me. And it's also, I know, and not, it's not also, I also know that some teachers don't have a choice with how their classroom is run. There is either admin that comes in and tells them how they want to see a kindergarten classroom run and it's very hard to go against what your admin tells you to do. Or you work in a district in the, I know, especially in the United States, where they give you the program and you have to follow it to a letter or else you don't have a job. And that's not like, I'm not saying that you should risk your job because of my philosophy, but just be Um, aware that if there is any opportunities for play-based centers to come into play, to use those opportunities and to make sure that your practice is developmentally appropriate. So I hope everybody enjoyed this episode of this podcast. I want to hear all about how your play-based or your uh, paper and pencil centers run. What's your personal philosophy? Are you do you completely disagree with me? I want to know. Again, I want to be reflective on my own practice and really be thinking back on how I think. And maybe I have some personal growth to go through with this too. And I want to hear all about how you guys run your center. So make sure you stay connected with me. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave me a comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, so you'll see more of these videos. I put out a podcast every week. If you enjoyed this podcast and you're listening to it with a podcasting site, make sure you're subscribed to me and pass along my podcast to any of your teacher friends that might want to listen to this too. Make sure to help me grow a little bit and reach a larger audience. I'm also available on Instagram at Creative Kindergarten Blog on TPT. I'll make sure I put a link in the show notes with that. I'm also on Facebook and I have a blog which has a lot of play-based and paper centers available for you to check out. It's creativekindergartenblog.com and you can go sign up for my newsletter there. 
And yeah, I would love for you guys to stay in touch and get in contact with me. Tell me how you run your kindergarten classrooms. What's your philosophy? Completely disagree with me, completely agree with me, whatever it is. I'd love to hear from you and I will talk to you guys next week. Thank <music> you.